A three quarter inch sheet of plywood can weigh 50 to 70 pounds or even more. They're unwieldy and a challenge to move by yourself and transport. Hey, welcome to Woodworking for Mere Mortals, the channel dedicated to weekend woodworkers who don't have a lot of space, expensive tools, or massive workshops. If you are brand new to this hobby and just don't know where to begin, I'd like to invite you to download my free guide to setting up your own shop for under $1,000 over to mytoollist.com today. If you don't have your own truck, check with the place where you buy the plywood and see if they can break it down into smaller pieces. Most of the big box home centers will have a panel cutting saw. Unfortunately, the store near me is a disaster and their saw never works. You could try calling first, but well, good luck. Of course, this is just my experience. Yours may be completely different. The next best solution would be to get a battery powered circular saw and cut the plywood in the parking lot using any of the techniques in this video. If you have a short bed pickup like mine, you can just load the plywood with the tailgate up. If you have a lot of plywood, this might be hard on the tailgate and you should probably put the gate down. If you have only a few sheets, a block like this with sandpaper on the base will grip the boards and hold them in place. Either way, be sure to strap the boards in place so that they don't unload themselves on the freeway. The trickiest part about maneuvering sheet goods is getting it positioned vertically and trying not to damage the corners too much. I've got a fairly long wingspan and usually just reach with my left hand on top and my right hand underneath as a hook. Then I set it down gently again trying not to damage the wood or smash my toes. You can also make a simple hook carrier like this one to help you carry sheet goods. There's a link in the description for a measured drawing. When cutting sheet goods, it's really important that both sides of your cut are supported. If not, it can cause your saw to bind or they could break off and splinter before you complete the cut. I prefer to work on the ground out in my driveway. One method is to use two by fours for support. Just set them underneath the plywood and cut slightly into them. But my favorite method for supporting plywood is to cut it on a sheet of foam building insulation. This is by far the easiest method to ensure even support. Set the depth of your cut so that they just barely cut into the insulation and a sheet will last for a long time. If you don't have enough space to store a full sheet of insulation, just cut it into a couple of pieces. That'll work out fine. In general, my strategy is usually to rough cut plywood into smaller pieces that are manageable that I can rip to their exact dimensions on my table saw or other tools. Probably the easiest, most accurate method for cutting large sheet goods is to use a track saw. If you think you're gonna be using a lot of plywood or going into production, this is the way to go. These these are tools that come with both the rail and a dedicated plunge saw. The main drawback to using track saws is they're expensive. I've never owned one myself and since the focus of this channel is affordable woodworking, I won't go into any depth on these. You know, for the same amount of money, you could get, say, a bandsaw, which I think you'll get a lot more use out of. I have, however, used this Craig AccuCut. This is an interesting, more affordable alternative to a track saw. With it, you pay only for the track and you customize it to work on your own circular saw. On the first couple cuts you make, you'll actually cut into this blue base, creating a zero clearance setup. I think it works pretty well, but I don't think I would use it for getting precise final cuts. To make a reasonably straight cut, really all you need is a straight edge to run your circular saw along. Anything that has a straight, smooth edge. This is a aluminum T-track. I've got an aluminum level. Both of those would work fine. You could also just use a factory cut edge of a piece of plywood as an edge guide. Whatever you use, you'll just need to draw a couple of reference points, line this up, and then clamp it to your plywood. 
And of course the problem there is that you'll have to adjust your foam insulation so that you have room for those clamps. For a long time I used this aluminum one that comes in two pieces that you can join together for really long cuts. Plus it came with its own pair of C-clamps. These days, this is my go-to straight edge. It clamps to the edges of the plywood so I can use it easily with my foam insulation. My friend Tim Sluter sent me this a while back and it's been a game changer. I'll include a link down in the description if you want to check it out. To use any edge guide, you'll need to account for the offset between the edge of your base plate to the saw blade. In my case, this saw is an inch and a half, so I'll just sub subtract that from the final dimension of the cut I need to make. So for instance, say I need to make a 12 inch wide cut here. What I'll do is measure two 10 and a half inches and make a mark over here. And then I'll make a mark 10 and a half inches down here. Now, I can align my straight edge up to those marks. There's really nothing wrong with just drawing a straight line and following it by eye. It's a quick and easy way to break up plywood into manageable pieces. If you are gonna freehand, it's probably a good idea to include one factory cut edge so that you can use it as a reference to square up the other side on your table saw. Unless you have a really massive shop space, I highly recommend buying only the amount of plywood you need for a project and break it down as soon as you get it home. If you're working out of a garage like I am, don't even bother trying to build a rack for storing four by eight sheet goods. It'll just take up too much valuable space that you could better use for tools or something else. I made this roll around lumber rack to store plywood cutoffs that are no larger than half a sheet. But you know, really having a small workshop can be very motivational. There's nothing more motivating than having a full size sheet of plywood standing in the middle of your shop, leaning up against your workbench. That'll get you started working on your project. 